because Lincoln is fighting a totally new kind of war. And his southern adversaries just don't get it. A packed train speeds on its way south, ready to replenish the Union Army with fresh troops and supplies. Lieutenant George Benedict writes home. We were stowed away in freight cars and started out of the city. The train took 600 other troops besides our regiment and numbered 34 heavily loaded cars. The railroad, one of Lincoln's hidden weapons in this war. In one key operation ordered directly by the president, 25,000 fresh troops are sent on a 1,200-mile journey to the south. By road, it would take over two months. By rail, it will take these men just seven days. Following its introduction in the 1830s, America's rail infrastructure has gradually spread its tentacles across the country. Lincoln realizes it can revolutionize the speed of troop deployments. He strikes a deal with the rail owners to put the North's railroad network under government control. It turns the railroad into a weapon of war. Instead of armies being limited to the speed at which they could march, all of a sudden you had armies being able to move to, uh, to the front uh, by rail, and more importantly, supplies. Supplies and troops pour out of the north towards the battlefront. Some busy lines carry 800 tons of supplies a day, the equivalent of 80 railroad cars. In Lincoln's hands, the 24,000 miles of rail track in the north becomes an arm of his war machine. But the south has a far smaller network, just 9,000 miles at the start of the war, and it remains under private control. In the four years the war lasts, the North adds 4,000 miles of new track to its network, against just 400 miles in the South. This inability to coordinate rail supplies will prove disastrous for the South. Even though they're just 30 miles from their capital in Richmond, in the winter of 1863, four rail links mean Southern troops in Virginia starve. For all their brilliance and determination in battle, the South simply lacked the logistics to deliver a decisive blow. And it isn't simply rail. Lincoln realizes that victory depends on mobilizing the entire industrial might of the North behind the war effort. Production of clothing in the North doubles during the conflict. Pitchfork manufacturers start making swords, while the number of patents doubles in the course of the war. Manufacturing, technology, infrastructure, it will change the face of America. For the first time in history, industry is put behind the war effort. An approach to conflict that America will exploit in the First and Second World Wars. It is the beginning of a new integrated economy that will be the hallmark of the modern age.